next we will look at histograms a histogram is an extremely useful pictorial summary of data we use histograms to display the distribution of group data now histograms are just like bar charts that we have seen previously but with a couple of differences okay first there are no gaps between the bars okay if you remember in a bar chart we had gaps between the bars in histograms you don't find gaps between the bars secondly the area of each bar in a histogram this is a very important idea I'll repeat the area of each bar in a histogram is equal to the frequency of that class okay now the area of the bar each bar that is in a histogram is equals to the frequency in that class now let's look at a new term frequency density okay I'm going to be using F full stop D for frequency density and that's equals to the frequency divided by the class width you need to know this yeah? frequency divided by the respective class width now in a histogram when you draw a histogram the vertical axis will be your frequency density good the horizontal axis what do we have on the horizontal axis lower boundaries okay on the horizontal axis we only indicate lower boundaries but don't forget to include the lower boundary of the class after the last class okay again because this is extremely important on the horizontal axis we will indicate lower boundaries plus one extra lower boundary that is the lower boundary of the class after the last class good now it's better to draw histograms on graph paper and let's look at a couple of examples first let's deal with discrete data histograms for discrete data let's look at an example yeah we have the daily number of visitors to a museum yeah? the daily number of visitors to a museum is recorded for a month okay and the results are shown in this table so we are looking at the number of visitors 30 to 69 the frequency we have one and the number of visitors from 70 to 149 we have 14 and so on yeah so we are looking at a month of data and we're looking at the daily number of visitors good so number of visitors we are looking at discrete data so number of visitors will be an exact value like you know 40 50 61 72 105 and so on so you won't have 102.67 and so on so that's why we're looking at an example in discrete data now the question says first state the boundaries of the interval 30 to 69 and then we are supposed to draw a histogram to represent this data so first let's go ahead and look at the interval 30 to 69 okay now this is discrete data so the lower boundary is 30 okay and the upper boundary is 69 I'll repeat you don't have to go 0.5 before and 0.5 after okay because this is discrete our lower boundary is 30 and the upper boundary is 69 the class width okay for this class 30 to 69 the class width remember take the lower boundary of the next class which is 70 and minus the lower boundary of our class now which is 30 to 69 minus 30 and you'll get 40 so you have your class width the frequency is one okay the frequency is one so you can work out the frequency density for this class which is 1 over 40 which is equals to 0 0.025 
now that we have worked out the frequency density for the first class which is 1 over 40 0 0.025 we work this out let's work out the frequency density for the other three classes so class 2 we have a lower boundary of 70 take note of that because you know we are going to use lower boundaries on the horizontal axis so I've mentioned all the lower boundaries as well okay so the class width is 150 minus 70 equals to 80 therefore my frequency density for class number 2 is the frequency is 14 divided by 80 you'll get 0 0.175 do the same for class 3 I've also mentioned the lower boundary here 150 the class width will be 200 minus 150 which is 50 so now my frequency density for class number 3 will be 10 divided by 50 0 0.2 and finally for my last class 200 to 299 my lower boundary is 200 my class width will be 300 minus 200 100 and therefore my frequency density will be 6 divided by 100 0 0.06 okay here I have drawn a histogram so let's go through the main points very carefully number one okay please use graph paper okay number two use proper scales yeah for your horizontal axis and your vertical axis okay and also include a title for the histogram here I have written the histogram of frequency density versus number of visitors okay those are some initial comments that I like you to appreciate and follow when you answer questions involving histograms okay so graph paper use proper scales for the horizontal axis and the vertical axis and include a title okay on the horizontal axis remember okay on the horizontal axis we mark in all the lower boundaries okay all the lower boundaries and one extra lower boundary that is the lower boundary of the class after the last class I'll repeat on the horizontal axis please mark in all lower boundaries and include one lower boundary of the class after the last class that's what you see here which is 300 yeah the lower boundary of the class after the last class okay then you also want to observe that I have broken this horizontal axis yeah so I've broken the horizontal axis to start at okay so that it's convenient for me okay I'll tell you again I have this is when you write something like this when you draw a graph okay this is your breaking the axis so I'm starting at a convenient point 30 okay so uh, I'll tell you again I have broken the line to start at 30 you can do that on any question that you have so that your histogram doesn't start at one end of the page okay I'll repeat the only reason we break the line here is so that we don't start the histogram at you know the right side of the page or you know when your picture must look balanced yeah we don't want it to appear at the extreme right of the graph paper okay so that's why I have broken the line okay next the vertical axis remember is the frequency density that's easy yeah we have worked out all the frequency densities in oh, sorry on page 7 so you can look up the numbers and once you do that we are ready to draw in the boxes okay so remember there are no gaps we have for class 1 okay the frequency is 1 for class 2 the frequency is 14 for class 3 the frequency is 10 and class 4 the frequency is 6 remember the area of each bar must equal the
frequency of the class. I repeat, the area of each bar, that is the most important idea behind histograms, the area of each bar must be equal to the frequency of that class. So I've also indicated the class, uh, excuse me, I've also indicated the frequencies here to help us along. Okay, so my first bar, okay, my first bar, the height is 0 0.025 and I start at 30. Okay, then my second bar, the height is 0 0.175. Okay, my third bar, the height is 0 0.2 and finally my last bar, the height is 0 0.06. So draw these carefully, it's quite easy to do. Okay, and uh, I want to emphasize one more point quickly. Please remember we are indicating the lower boundaries on the horizontal axis plus one lower boundary of the class after the last class. Drawing the boxes or the bars, make sure the frequencies are equals to the area of the bars. Okay, good. Now let's move on. Okay, a couple of remarks. Okay, a couple of remarks here. Here I have started at 30. Okay, the answer given in the text from which I took the problem, this problem is taken from a text just to illustrate the idea. The answer given in the text, they start at 29.5. Okay, and I like you to know that it is also acceptable to do that. Yeah, I start at 30 because I think it's more reasonable for discrete data. Okay, because like I mentioned in my notes, it's you're not going to have 29.7 visitors. Yeah, so because it is discrete data, I want to start at 30. But if you want to start at 29.5, it's uh, also acceptable. Okay. Okay. To finish up. I recommend that you use the boundaries like I have done, okay? That is 30, 70, yeah? 30, 70, 150, and so on, okay? Now, like I told you, I use these boundaries because they are we are dealing with discrete data. Now, if you like, you can choose the boundaries like the text has done. They have used boundaries like 29.5, yeah, 69.5. Okay, let me write that again. One forty nine point five and so on. Okay. So this bo these boundaries that the text has used has excuse me. This boundaries that the text has used is also acceptable. Okay? So don't worry about this, yeah. I explained to you why I used 30, 70, 150 and so on because I think it's more correct and it represents discrete data. Now I don't want you to worry about this, okay? Choose whichever one that you are comfortable with, it's fine. Both are correct, okay? Both are correct. Remember what we are interested in? We are interested in the shape of the distribution, yeah? We are interested in the shape of the distribution in the shape of the distribution, pardon me. Okay? We are interested in the shape of the distribution and with group data we are dealing with estimates so don't worry about this okay so you can use the low boundaries like I have done or you can use the low boundaries like the text has used both are correct next let's deal with continuous data we are going to plot a histogram involving continuous data so before anything else let's sort this out the vertical axis for the histogram is going to be frequency density okay that is frequency divided by the class width on the horizontal axis we are going to indicate lower boundaries okay plus one upper boundary Now this upper boundary is for the last class. So let me write it here for the 